Hi folks, welcome to lesson six, health and infection with Priestland Science. Our last lesson, we were looking at how vaccinations work and I left you with the practice questions. Uh, the answers are here. So if you wanna check your answers, now's a good time to do it. So you can pause when you want to. So that's um, questions one to five. Uh, question six A is here. Uh, B and C to question six are here. Uh, this is question seven. And then we can start today's lesson. So the format is as normal. Uh, if you need to get things from Show My Home Up and you haven't done so, now is probably a good time to do it uh, before we start the retrieval practice, which is here. So if you can pause and retrieve. And the answers are here. So you can pause and go over some bits and pieces if you need to. The second set of questions are here. So pause and retrieve. And the answers are here, so pause and revise. And the last set of questions are here, so pause and retrieve. And the answers are here, so pause and revise. Uh, today's lesson, we're looking at the role and impact of different medicines in treating the disease once we, we've caught those diseases. We're looking at uh, the role and impact of those medicines. So you're going to need a few different documents um, from Show My Homework. Um, these are all on Show My Homework, but if you haven't got access to Show My Homework, then you can copy straight from the screen. So the first set of questions that we're going to use are here. So if you want to copy them down, then pause. And the second document looks like this, another flow map. And then our practice questions are here and here. So we're gonna go across to the camera now. Okay, so here we are. Describing the role and impact of different medicines on treating disease. Um, this is the new knowledge we're gonna go through. So the first question says, name the class of drug used to treat bacterial infections. And the answer is, antibiotics, which I'm sure everybody has heard of. The next question says, what are antibiotics? And the answer is drugs or medicines, if you prefer, that kill bacteria. Now, antibiotics only work on bacteria, they'll only kill bacteria. So hence, I've put that into capitals and underlined it there. Question three, why can't influenza be treated with antibiotics? And the answer is, influenza is caused by a virus. And I've just told you in the previous question, antibiotics only work for bacteria. So anything which is caused by a virus cannot be treated with antibiotics. The next question is to describe the purpose of painkillers in the treatment of disease. Um, painkillers, and in brackets, I'm going to put e.g. paracetamol. reduce symptoms. Um, and by that, I'll give you a couple of examples. So e.g. pain, obviously, to so reduce pain and things like swelling. What they don't do is they don't kill the pathogen. They just treat the symptoms of that pathogen. Uh, so Next question says, why is it difficult to treat viral infections? Uh, the answer is viruses reproduce inside body cells, which I think we covered in lesson one. You remember those viruses get inside the cell and they copy, replicate themselves and they burst out of the cell. So when the viruses are inside the cell, they're very difficult to treat because they are inside the cell. 
So getting medicines to them is, is not the easiest thing to do. And the last question says, why shouldn't people overuse antibiotics? And the answer is, it can lead to antibiotic resistant bacteria. It can lead to antibiotic resistant bacteria. And the one which is most common is something called MRSA. MRSA stands for methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus, which is a type of bacteria, um, which is very difficult to treat. So we're going to have a look now how these antibiotic resistant bacteria have come about. And to do that, we're going to do it on our flow map. So again, I've got the question at the bottom at the top of the page, how do bacteria become resistant to um, antibiotics? So I'm gonna draw some pictures to help you explain what's going on. So first I'm gonna draw what is a simple structure of a bacteria cell. Now bacteria cells are actually very, very small. Obviously I'm magnifying things right up so we can see it. And they have a cell wall. So I've, drew, I've drawn a kind of double layered structure there for a cell membrane and a cell wall. And they don't have a nucleus, which I'm sure you know. What they have is kind of a loop of DNA, just because they're all a little bit mixed up there. So I'm just gonna put here, that's the DNA. And what bacteria are very good at doing quickly is copying themselves. So I'm gonna draw this bacteria copying itself into two identical copies. So my DNA might look a bit different, but it's supposed to be the same. So I'm going to put here, same DNA, same copy of the DNA. Now we call this process mitosis. Mitosis to form a cell division. So I'm going to write down here, during mitosis, bacteria copy their DNA before dividing. The key thing is their bacteria, they've got to copy their DNA if they're gonna make an exact copy of themselves. Then what happens, if we imagine on a larger scale, so if I do that very small up here, um, I'm gonna leave the DNA out now because I wanna make this quite simple. So I'm just drawing the kind of cell wall forget what's inside it for a second. So if we look at this in a couple of cell divisions, then that would be one level of cell division. And then there's two bacteria have come back from that one bacteria. And then if we get another layer of cell division, this bacteria will copy itself to make two identical ones. And this one should do the same, but I'm gonna do something slightly different here. So I'm gonna do one copy, which is the same. And then the other copy, I'm gonna change. And I've changed my color pen. You don't have to change your color pen, but you have to denote in some way that this one is different. I'm also gonna color it in as well. Now what we've got here is something called a mutation. And essentially a mutation happens when the DNA of this cell wasn't copied accurately, and it happens quite a lot. Um, so we've got here, which, with this cell is this bacteria cell is mutated. So we're right here. However, however, comma, sometimes the DNA is not copied accurately, DNA not copied accurately, comma, which leads to mutations. It's a key word there, mutations. We get these mutated forms of bacteria. 
Now let's imagine what that looks like inside a human being. So a very simple looking human being here. And so I'm gonna put this inside a human being. Now I'm gonna change the circles actually, because it's easier to draw a circle, or quicker to draw a circle than use a rectangle. So here we go. And then another one. And then, those, so those are the little black ones. And then I'm going to put in the mutated one. So there's the mutated one. So I'm gonna, obviously this is a pretty, pretty sad person, uh, mainly because they've got this mutated bacteria. So mutated bacteria. And underneath, I'm going to write the following. Inside a human being, this would lead to a mixed bacterial population. A mixed bacterial population. Let's just screw that across a little bit. There you go. So inside the human being, this would lead to a mixed bacterial population. Now what tends to happen next, because that person is sick, they head off to the doctor, and the doctor will probably give them something which looks a bit like this, and somewhere on it would be written the name of an antibiotic. And the most common one, obviously, is, uh, is penicillin. So our patient is going to take this penicillin. So I'm going to put the bacteria, the bacteria still on there. So those are the non-mutated forms. And here I've got the mutated bacteria. Now penicillin will essentially kill all the normal non-mutated form of the bacteria. So underneath I'm gonna write that. Antibiotics will kill bacteria except mutated bacteria which you can see from the diagram. That little red bacteria is still there. I've not put a cross through it. Now what happens next, I'll redraw my person. You probably guess what's going to happen next. Still looking sad. Is that particular mutated bacteria will copy itself just by mitosis, a normal process of cell division. So here we have mutated bacteria multiply by mitosis. So what we've ended up with is more of that mutated bacteria. As my final box, I'm gonna write, this leads to antibiotic resistant strains of bacteria. So we've got the antibiotic resistant strains of bacteria. Uh, antibody resistance obviously means a form of bacteria which will no longer uh, be killed by that specific antibiotic when we use penicillin. Now you might think that is super, super bad, and it is, it is pretty bad. However, we do have uh, this particular patient would, would be given different forms of different um, antibiotics to see if they could kill it with different types of uh, antibiotics. So that would be the next step there. Um, but really, for today's lesson, that's where I wanted to leave it. So 
I guess all that you need to do now is do a little bit of that embedding. So go back over the questions we did, uh, just in the camera. Go back through this process uh, of what's on the flow map there. Again, a little bit of retrieval practice, either on your own or with someone else. And then you have the practice questions, which you either printed from Show My Homework, or you can just rewind the video a little bit to find those questions again. So I think that's it for today.